I'm going to run you guys through my full workflow on editing a shoot from bringing it onto my computer from memory cards and then editing and exporting it so you can see what that looks like. So to start with, I'm going to copy the photos onto my external hard drive, my working hard drive first. So I keep all my hard drives over here on my desktop and I keep them in order. So these ones are the working drives that I've had for the last several years and they go in order. So this is my newest, most current drive. So before that was this one, then this one, then this one. So if you've got years and years of work like me, it's so nice to be able to go back and access that work easily and have everything ordered. And I set up everything to make it easy to find down the road. So I'm gonna create a new folder for the shoot on my working drive. So, and the way that I'm gonna title it is really important because that's what makes everything go in order on my hard drives. So you start with the year, use two digits for that. So 17, then the month, two digits for that as well. This month was July, and then the day is last. And this makes it so everything on your hard drives will be ordered according to date, which is so easy to find things. So then I'm listing the family's last name for the shoot right there. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna create a folder. I just call mine VO, that stands for Brian's Originals, not Body Odor, you jerks. And then I'm just going to copy all of these photos off of my memory card into this folder. And the reason why I titled this folder BO is because when I'm working with second photographers, I can easily just put a different folder that makes it so we differentiate. And I usually just put that folder with their, the first letter of their first name and then the letter O. Okay, I've got the photos all on my hard drive now, so now I'm going to cull the photos. I'm using Photo Mechanic to do that. It's way faster than Lightroom. I like it way better. I can usually call a family session in 15 minutes, which is awesome. So I'm pulling the photos up here. I've just navigated to my working hard drive, which is called On Point. Whenever I get a new hard drive, I just think of the weirdest name I can, and I just write it on there, and then it just stays forever. So I thought that one should be called On so then I push spacebar to go to full screen, and now I'm going to run through and call these photos. It's going to be super fast. I won't record the whole time because 15 minutes is way too long for you to sit here. But I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing as I'm going through these so you know how it works. So again, you can do the same thing in Lightroom basically, but Photo Mechanic is way faster. It's totally worthwhile in my opinion to purchase it and use it for culling purposes. So I typically call a family session in 15 minutes. And a wedding with two photographers and around 4,000 images in two hours or less. So that is really fast. But as I'm doing this, I'm not thinking about it a ton. I'm more just feeling out what I want from the images and what I like best. And I will keep things in here that I will remove eventually. But at this time, I'm just going through, the goal is just speed. Like, I'm going to get it done fast. I'll pull out anything I don't want later. I'm definitely calling it down a ton. But if, I, if it's hard for me to make a decision between two, I might just go ahead and leave it for now until I go ahead and edit it later. So I'm going through, the way that I'm calling these photos is I'm pushing the T button to choose the photo. So if it's a photo I want to keep, I push the T button. When I do that, it puts this little check down here. This allows me to sort these later. So I hit the T button on that one. T button on that one. So I'm just going through super fast. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flag anything that I might use for a blog post. So I use five stars to flag things that I am potentially going to use for a blog post. And how you five star them is by pushing control five. So now you see it popped up this little five star down here showing that I'll potentially use that for a blog post. So later in Lightroom, it reads those tags. So I'm able to sort by those. So I'm just going to keep going through. I'm keeping it in the full screen mode like this so that I can see the photos big on the screen and choose the ones that I really like the best.
Okay, so I'm going to finish culling this, and then I will re-turn this back on to show you the things that I do when I'm finished culling in Photo Mechanics. Okay, so I've gone through and culled this whole shoot now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and sort by my tagged photos. And so now that's just going to pull up the ones I've chosen. I chose 275. That's way too many. I'm going to highlight them all. I'm going to create a new folder here. This is just creating a new folder on my hard drive in my client's folder for this shoot. Everything for this shoot will be organized in this folder. I'm going to copy all these accepted photos into this folder. What that does is that makes it so when I'm importing to Lightroom, I'm only pulling in the photos that I've already accepted. So on a family shoot, it's not a huge deal, but on a wedding, it does save you a little bit of time to not be importing all 4,000 images or however many images you have to import. So a little bit of time savings there, which is nice. I like time savings. And now I'm going to go into Lightroom and pull those images into Lightroom from here. So that's all that I do in Photo Mechanic. So I'm going to close it out. Now I'm going to pull the accepted images into Lightroom and I'm going to create a new Lightroom catalog when I go to do that. So going here let me I'm just going to show you from another open catalog because Lightroom saying I can't find the catalog I was last using because it's on an external hard drive that's not hooked up but if you open Lightroom you should go file new catalog so I'm creating a new catalog into the same folder the client folder where I've got the accepted photos now and the original photos so I'm just going to name it the client's last name Stebbins opening the new catalog, so I'm going to import my accepted photos now. So over here I'm going to my hard drive which is the on point. Here is the client's folder. I'm clicking on accepted. And now I'm going to import all of these photos. So again I'm only importing the accepted photos now. So I'm not importing all of the photos which is a little bit of a time saver. So these photos are all pulling into Lightroom now. So the first thing I'm going to do once they get pulled in is I'm going to go ahead and mark them all as accepted. And I'm going to, as I go through and edit, I will pull some out because I did a fast cull, which is what I always do in Photo Mechanic, um, so that I can pull them out as I'm editing as I see what doesn't work. So I just highlighted all the photos. And now I'm just going to hit the P button, which is for pick. So that's going to go ahead and flag all of the photos as accepted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply my Visco preset, which I'm coming over here. The one that I use is this, the Visco Film 06 Push and Pull Canon, and then the Portra 160 plus plus plus. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to all of them, and we'll see it start applying it to the photos now. So. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the grain from all these. I don't love Visco's grain. It looks a little bit fakey to me. So I'm going to go down and click grain, none. Again, this is going to apply to all the photos. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to build the one-to-one -one previews because I want them to load really quickly for me as I'm editing. So typically, I'll take a little bit of a break right now while it's doing this because it takes it a little while. So you just go library, previews, build one-to-one -one previews, make sure you have all the photos highlighted. And so now it's building one-to-one -one previews. And basically what that means is it's applied my Visco preset to the photos and now it's building the previews so I don't have to wait at all for it to build them when I open up the photo full screen. So if you don't do this, it's like applying the settings to your photo each time you go to the screen, each time you pull up a photo and it just gives a few seconds of lag time while it's doing that. So each like little second that takes longer adds to slowing you down. So I like to do this, and especially this is just a family shoot. It's only 275 images total, um, which is way too many. It should be like less than 200, closer to 100. So I'm gonna have to narrow a bunch down. But, um, but for a wedding when you're talking like 800 images, especially 
like the time that it takes for it to build previews really saves you some time. So now the one-to-one -one previews are built. So I'm gonna go through and the first thing I do is choose the images that I wanna blog. So the way that I do that is I've already tagged anything I potentially wanna blog as a five-star image. So I'm just gonna click on that so that I'm sorting only my five-star images. Uh, there's 114 five-star images. Again, that's just way too many. But what I'm gonna do is go through and I'm gonna flag the images that I potentially wanna blog as being green. So that's using the number eight. So I'm just gonna go through. As I'm choosing these, I mean, I'm focusing on the why of my work, wanting things to have a lot of feel to them and be honest. Part of that too is telling the story of the location too. So I like these images, I've chosen them to include them um, because of that feel for the location. So now I'm gonna go through, these images too are completely unedited, they just have the Visco preset applied to them. So I'm gonna go through and flag whichever ones. I think I'm gonna to wanna to include, I'm gonna run through one more round again and narrow down what I'm for sure gonna include. So. I just do this again like everything else really quickly. So I've gone through now and I've selected all the images that I'm going to block potentially. So now I'm going to sort them with the green flag just by clicking that. So 58 images I'm looking at blogging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all those. I'm going to create a new collection. I'm just going to name it Stebbins full blog post. Create that collection. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to choose which ones I really want to blog. So, and what I'm doing right now is I'm setting the, the foundation for how I'm going to blog it too. So I'm ordering things as well so that I know after I've got these chosen, now I'm, next I'm going to go through and edit these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off the green, click off the five star. Okay, I'm going to use this image and I'm going to use this image and then this image, and I'm gonna put these two side by side. So what I'm doing is I'm two-starring these images so that I know later that these two images are gonna go side by side in the blog layout. In the blog layout. This image will then come next. So then I'm gonna keep moving through here, choosing which images I wanna for sure use. And the other thing that I do is anything that I'm going to put in black and white or that I think I'm going to put in black and white, I change it to yellow just as a marker for myself. So yeah, I like all these. There's a lot of emotion in these, which I like. This was not an easy shoot. The kids had a really hard time getting into it, as you can kind of tell. But this is a family I've worked with for lots of years. They're really awesome. Um, always love working with them so and they they always are so happy with the photos so it's trying to decide what I'm gonna do with these ones so anything that I'm removing like I just remove the green label and then I'm gonna remove this from the collection so it's not a part of it so let me One black and white, remove this one. And again, I'm one starring everything that's just going to be on its own in the blog post. Oops, them walking, that's great. So, Scarlet, I'm going to put these two side by side in a layout. And I like, I, I basically view my blog layouts as like an album type design. And they're, to me, that's really fun. I love aesthetics, I love laying things out like that. And it's the part of my work that I put my own touches on like my own vision on um, you can't do that for like every single photo but I do a higher level of editing on my blog ones and it's part of what's like fulfilling to me about my work so I'm still going through and choosing these Bit repetitive, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. Okay, 
I think I'll do a little series out of these ones. So I'm going to do these two side by side, and then this one below it, and this one below in black and white. These little kids like to just stare at me a lot, which I thought was hilarious. So I'm reordering these. I'm going to do these two side by side. So you can tell I do this really fast. I'm not putting a ton of thought into it. I'm mostly just operating on feel. I've done this a lot. Know what I'm going for. Don't really want that included. Okay, so now I know what I'm gonna put in my blog post. That just probably took me three minutes or something like that. So now I'm gonna go through and start actually editing these photos. So I've mentioned before I use the Visco keys for editing, I think it's really fast. This isn't the time that I use them really fast, but I do use them some for this. So I just push the escape button, which turns on the Visco keys, which is this little thing up here. And that just basically allows me so that I'm doing adjustments with my keyboard using the Visco keys instead of using my mouse. Like you can see these adjustments are all done just with my keyboard which is really, really fast. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna edit these photos. So I'm editing 51, which is a lot of photos for a portrait session, but I'm, again, not gonna do super heavy editing. I'll run you guys through a little bit of editing on these just to show you kind of what I do. But mostly, I wanna get everything right in camera to start with. So and in Lightroom, I don't, I don't really, I only adjust mainly exposure and white balance. I do a little bit with black sometimes and a little bit with saturation sometimes, but really I don't usually leave beyond this uppermost window of adjustment in Lightroom. And again, I'm just moving pretty fast, using the Visco keys for most of my adjustments, getting kind of the feel I want. If I want to pull the white balance anywhere in the image, I'll just use this little dropper tool, which I'm sure you all know how to do too. It's really helpful to me in getting a reference point sometimes. For this one, I might adjust the shadows up a little bit for those, since there's so much dark spots in it. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of setting the foundation for how I'm gonna edit the whole rest of the shoot because I'm gonna basically sync everything off of these photos that I'm editing right now. So, you know, in this blog post here, you're going to see there's basically at least one image from every group of photos. So I can pretty easily sync off of that one image for each group in each lighting situation. And that just makes it really fast after I go through and do this editing here. So this is looking a little magenta to me, so I'm going to take the magenta down a little bit. wish he was smiling in this photo, but it is what it is. Crop it in just a tad to get them centered. And I just keep working kind of with the coloring and stuff until I feel happy with it. Um, this, I'm not loving the way that this is editing. I'm a little bit like shadowy and dark, but that's kind of just how the Oregon woods are too, so. Okay, and so now what I can do is I can sync these 
since these are in similar lighting, although this was my first shot, so it was really dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and not sync the exposure. I just wanna get the white balance and stuff the same. And I've got this mark that I'm gonna put it in black and white. I'm kind of liking the color version right now though, so I'm not sure if I want to or not. And again, now I can sync all of these off of this. And this is basically what I'm going to do for the whole gallery after I get done editing these few blog images. I'm still just going through and editing these for the blog post. And I just wanted to show you guys pulling something into Photoshop. So I'm just pushing Command E. I'm wanting to put this photo in black and white. The black and white that I do, I do in Photoshop. I have an action set up to do that in Photoshop automatically for me. So my computer is opening this in Photoshop. And it's so nice that you can just save from Lightroom directly back into Photoshop so easily, or from the opposite of that, from Photoshop back into Lightroom. So I'm going to um, go ahead and apply my action, which is just a matter of pushing that button over here. One other little thing that I've been doing lately and really liked on my black and white. I'm maybe I'm thinking that I might want the kids' faces a little bit brighter, so I'm kind of making that adjustment. But I like the way that it is just as it is. I'm just kind of being really particular. So I'm going through and just kind of masking their faces to bring them out just a tiny bit more like that so they match a little bit more to the parents <clears throat> and then I'm going to flatten the image so I have it set up so it's just pushing function f1 is going to flatten the image for me and all of those little shortcuts make a huge difference in your time and then I'm saving it back into Photoshop just by pushing command s again Photoshop was the wrong word saving it back into Lightroom so then I've got this image here I'm flagging the original as rejected Here's the one that I'm going to use for the blog post in black and white, and I've flagged it as accepted. I'm done editing the blog post images now. So as I went through and edited these, my focus was on skin tones was the main thing. And over the years, I've just developed how I like to edit things and how I like them to look. Um, it's mostly just by feel, just like I can feel when it's right. So. Most of you are probably at that point too, but if you're not, just after you do it a long time, you'll get really used to it and really fast to it, just knowing how you want things to be edited. So these are the ones I'm gonna post on the blog. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and export them for the blog. So I'm gonna highlight them all, I'm gonna export them. I'm gonna title them according to how I want people to find them. And the, you wanna just think about how you think people will find these photos because you want people to hire you based off of these photos. Posting them on the blog is a form of advertising. So, um, and Google reads image names. So I'm gonna name these Hillsborough Family Photos. Exporting them at 900 pixels wide, 900 pixels high, 72 pixels per inch inch and then I'm going to save them back into these clients as folder so sevens new folder sevens full blog post so I'm choosing that I'm going to go ahead and export them okay and now it's going to export these blog images and it's pretty fast that do I've got one more step that I do in preparing the photos to go up on my blog, and that's I run a, just a quick sharpening filter on them. 
and then also I have to put the ones like these two that I want side by side I have to put them side by side as well in Photoshop so I'll read through the, that process I'm going to stop this so you don't have to wait for it all. these are all exported now so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a sharpen filter on them in Photoshop so I have these this already set up I've created an action that allows me to just batch this. So I'm just going into Photoshop, File, Automate, Batch. And then I'm going to choose. It's in the blog posts. No, it's not. Blog actions. I apply just a 50% sharp filter to all of my blog images. And that's basically in Photoshop, you're just going up to Filter, clicking Sharpen sharpen again and then lowering the opacity of that to 50%. I feel like a full 100% sharpen is too much to me. It doesn't look realistic. So I just do it at this and then I need to choose my folder. So going here, Stevens, Stevens full blog post, choose. Okay. Now it's running that sharpen on all of those images for me to prepare them for the blog. So now those photos are all sharpened. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag them into my Dropbox so I have access to them to use them for portfolio stuff. So, and on this, I should have named the folder this originally, um, but we want to organize it according to date so that we can find it. Just like on the hard drives, how we have that organizing system. So I'm putting it like that. And then the folder I use in my Dropbox is just called Portfolio Low Resolution, and this is what I pull my Instagram photos from on my phone. And it's nice to have this, I've talked about this, but it's nice to have this because you basically have access to your portfolio from anywhere. Um, it's all in Dropbox, so when you go through to do like a portfolio update, say for the next year, you can go through and pull all of your blog, and, which all my blog images are my favorite images, from that year and you can run through them quickly and they're all just in one place and since they're all low res they don't take up a lot of space too. I do also have another folder here, portfolio full resolution for full, full res files, but I do put all the low res just in this and then I have easy access to them. Um, and then so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got to go through and arrange my blog posts like how I went through and numbered or starred those for the ones that we're going to take up to slots or be side by side. So now I've got to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do for that, I use storyboard. I know there's more than one way to do this. Um, I know like blog stomp I think is another one you can use, but I'm using storyboard. So I'm going to storyboard, storyboard, storyboard configuration. Just have to set it up to save correctly where I want. And I have to choose what name I want. Again, I'm going to go with the same Hillsborough family photos. Save. Okay, so now what I can do is by looking here in Lightroom, I can see the ones that are two starred, and those are the ones that are going to be side by side. So I'm going to go in, go through file scripts, storyboard. So I know the first two are going to be storyboarded, so I click on those. It's combining them. Go back to Lightroom, one of the next ones. Image, no, that one's just one. 14 and 15. So I'm going to click 14 and 15 right there. Back to Lightroom. And I want this process to be super fast. I don't want to be spending a bunch of time combining images. I used to spend a lot of time on that, and it's just not a worthwhile. Thing to spend your time on but I do like the way that you can tell stories by putting images side by side so I do spend five minutes doing this for my blog posts and I think it it gives more of the look and feel that I want so now 4041 So now I'm going to go in. I need to rename them so that they're in the right order because Storyboard renames them. So I'm going to the Stebbins, full blog post. 
And then what I can do is look at these, and Storyboard gives this different ending, so 001, but I name them the same that I exported from Lightroom because I want to be able to change these really quickly. So I know this one is image one, we'll put that in the right order. I've got to check back here. So that's image 14, so I'm changing it to 14. This is again just getting the order right. And depending on which program you use to do this, you would do it differently. But I'm basically just looking back and forth between Lightroom and this window over here in the finder to put the right numbers that I need on these images. Although I just did the last one wrong because I'm talking to you guys instead of paying good attention. This one should be 35. And this one is 40. Those are the storyboarded original images, so I just pull that over here. So now these are all ready to upload to Squarespace. So I'm just going to upload them to Squarespace like you would with any blog. Now I'm going to upload them to my blog. So I want consistency across all my naming because Google reads that, reads the naming on websites and blog posts. So I'm just going to put Hillsborough Family Photos. Then I'm going to write something nice here. I won't write it right now, but I'm going to also add tags. Hillsborough Family Photos. I can't remember what the name of the actual venue was. I need to look at it, but I'm going to put that in there too because people might look it up according to the park. If they're interested in doing photos at that park. So I'm just looking at my calendar and my phone to see what that location was. I'm just going to upload my photos. And actually, one thing before I start doing that, because I'm going to stop this once I start doing that, so you don't have to wait. But here, I'm going to go ahead and have a great time. So I'm going to link the location, and part of what I do, why I do that is for SEO stuff. So any outgoing or incoming links help your rankings on Google and establish you as a more legitimate site. So I always link the locations, just like for weddings, I link vendors, locations, and all of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and link that here, and then I'm going to change the text and let these photos upload. Okay, the blog images are up now and finished. So now what I've basically created for myself is a, like a template that I can just copy for editing all of the photos. So I'm going to edit the full gallery now. And basically all I'm going to do, because I've edited an image from each lighting situation now for the most part. So I can just go through and I set it up so that I've got four images up on the screen like this and I'm working on a 27 inch iMac right now but I do the same thing on my 15 inch MacBook Pro but now I'm going to go through with the Visco keys and I'm just going to make these changes to them just super quickly just looking at them in this view I'm not going to get much more quick much more close than that or take much more time um, you can quickly push spacebar if you need to see one full size and this is just super fast so I've spent like an hour maybe editing the blog images and now it's probably going to take me 15 minutes to go through and do the rest of the full shoot or 15 minutes to half an hour so it's just really quick really painless this system works really good for me and i feel really good about it because i am putting a lot of work into a certain number of images my favorite images from the shoot i'm going through and putting that extra level of detail and care into that the perfectionistic side of me loves 
but I could also probably spend eight hours editing these images if I let the perfectionistic side of me take over and the clients wouldn't really see the difference. So for me, it feels like a good balance of I am going in putting my touch on those favorite images and putting work into them and all the other ones I'm going to make them look great. Like all of these images look great. They're going to love these images in the end. But I'm not just spending a ridiculous amount of time on them either and wasting time that's not going to make a difference to the client or make me any additional money. So you'll notice I flagged this blue. That means that I'm going to put it in black and white. I have my action in Photoshop set up to be done in a batch, so I just click the number 9 on the images I want to be black and white, and then I'm going to run the action on that after I get through editing them. So I'm just going to keep going on this, and I'm just highlighting and syncing here super fast. That one's just a little bit brighter than I want. This one and so I do the same thing with weddings and I'm using the Visco keys which they don't sell anymore but they give it away for free they just don't support it and that's how I'm going through and making these adjustments with my keyboard which is just really really fast and I love it. I was I emailed Visco when they said that they weren't gonna support Visco keys anymore because I was like are you guys kidding me this is something I use all the time so, but they were like, we will continue supporting it. So I've continued to use it. I love it. It's a huge part of my workflow and just a huge time saver. And one other piece I love about viewing things like this, where it's in a grid, is that I can see all of the images at once. So part of what I'm wanting is consistency across all of these. So it's not like there's one that looks out of place. So it's like a full body of work that's together, kind of like one shoot is one piece of art. And I, I find this view just really helps me to do that. So uh, it also helps me to not think too hard about the images or just over analyze them um, because they look great. Like the way that I took them, they should have looked good to begin with and now I'm making them look better. So, which is great, that's awesome. So I'm gonna go through and finish this up. I'll pause this so you guys can see how I'm doing this and how I'm making adjustments. The Visco keys adjustments that I'm making are just using the up and down arrows and the left and right arrows on my keyboard and then control, option, and command to adjust the amount that I'm making those adjustments. So super easy, super simple. I would recommend downloading that. I'm done editing now. I don't know how long that took me, but it was really fast for how many photos I edited. 265, yeah, which was a lot. So I'm really happy with how they came out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and export these, highlight them all, click export, okay, and then just use their last name, adjust this to full resolution, 300 ppi, no resizing to fit, I don't need this little thing in there because it automatically puts it, I'm putting this into their folder as well. Okay, now it's going to export those files. This is way too many photos for a family session, in my opinion, but there were so many great moments in here that I wanted to keep, and you can't really give people too many photos, but I feel really good about all the ones that I'm sending to them, so I'm happy for this family to have lots of photos of their family. Their kids were really hilarious and stuff. And <clears throat> one thing that I wanted to mention is for each of these little parts of my workflow that I'm doing, each part of it feels really manageable to me, which is a really big deal, because then you're not putting it off because you're dreading doing something, because each little section of it is a manageable enough amount of time. Like, nothing takes longer than one to two hours total for each section of it. So it's easy to just get two free hours, hop in, bust it out quickly on each section of my workflow for both family shoots and weddings, editing any shoots. So I think that's part of the key is to figure out what works for me, 
what sets it up so that I'm not dreading it, so I'm not putting it off and waiting to do it, and what sets me up so that I can just jump right in, move through things quickly, feel like I've got a lot of momentum going, and then move on to the So the photos are exporting right now, and I'm just wanting to post the blog post to social media. The main thing that I want to do while I'm doing that is <clears throat> if it was a, a like big shoot that I was really wanting to promote, I would probably wait until more in the evening when there's more people online. Um, but for this one, it, it, I'm not necessarily pursuing doing a ton of family photos. So I'm just going to go ahead and post it on family photos, or go ahead and post it on Facebook and Twitter. And the main thing is I just try to come up with some sort of caption that I think will make people actually read it. So I'm, I'm, I'll try to come up with something about like, this family I've taken photos for for almost 10 years. So something like weird, something funny, something that will get people to actually click on the link and look at it because there's so much competition on the internet. So you need something that's gonna catch people's attention or they're just gonna scroll right over it in their feed because they probably have 10 other family photos, blog posts in their feed. So okay, the photos are all exported. So the one thing that I need to do now is make my black and white photos black and white so first I need to sort if you remember how I selected all of the ones I wanted black and white blue in Lightroom so now I'm in photo mechanic and I'm gonna go through and sort so in photo mechanic reads all of my labels from Lightroom and vice versa Lightroom reads labels from photo mechanic so I'm gonna sort I want only the blue ones so I need to pull out the other ones the other colors I use are yellow green and then ones that are uncolored are this color that was over here. So here's all my blue ones. So I'm gonna highlight them all. I'm just gonna create a folder right here called BW. Copy this in here. Go into Lightroom, or into Photoshop. File, automate, match. Black and white. Navigating to this folder. Boom. Now I go back to whatever else I was doing while Photoshop makes these photos black and white for me. So I talk a ton. You guys know about automating things. It's so nice to have Photoshop doing these things for me while I'm doing other tasks. Super efficient and I would just get bored making a bunch of photos black and white. I don't want to do that. But I want the quality of the black and white in Photoshop that I like the look of so much. So this enables me to get that look without taking the time to actually open all those in Photoshop and run my action on them. Photoshop's done making those photos black and white. So now I'm back in Photo Mechanic. I go into the black and white folder. I'm just dragging these back into the Finals folder. So now I've got all of the photos in that Finals folder. I'm gonna delete the black and white folder because I don't need it. So now I'm gonna run JPEG Mini on these. JPEG Mini just makes your photos a lot smaller, makes them faster to upload for your clients to download they just take up less space but you don't lose any print quality so it's really cool uh, jpeg mini does have a lightroom plugin where you can export directly from lightroom and have jpeg mini applied to it i don't do that because it it's caused problems for me with running my black and white action in photoshop i don't know exactly why that is uh, but it does so i just do it this way but it's just as easy as you just drag it here Okay, now it's gonna go through these photos and resize them. And it's really fast and quick, and I really love this program. It's really worthwhile. Uh, remind me later. So now it's going through, it's just showing you the amount of space it's saving on each image. Again, I think this is worthwhile because it saves you so much money on USB drives, on hard drives, and on hosting online for your galleries to have your photos be so much smaller. And since there's no downside for your clients, they're getting the same print quality out of the image and the same printability, then I think it's a completely worthwhile thing to do. At the same time, I wouldn't do this for a commercial client because they're needing and wanting that big file size. So I'm just gonna wait for this to JPEG Mini is all done now. On this one shoot, it saved me 2.136 gigs. So that's a lot of space to have saved. So that's awesome. So then I'm just gonna close out of that. And then I'm just gonna upload a new collection. I use Pixie Set, I love Pixie Set. 
the one of the most important things to me is the aesthetic of a gallery. In my opinion, the way that you're presenting things is huge. Just like if you were doing an art show, you would put a lot of care into how you're going to present your pieces of art. I feel the same way about my photos, and the way that clients see the photos is really important to me. And especially with weddings, I have a lot of people who are not the clients viewing the gallery. So I want them, I want the photos to look awesome and be in a format that just looks really good. Pixie photo, or Pixie's that is just super clean, super simple. I love that about it. So that's what I use, it works really great. So I'm just gonna upload these, which you don't need to watch, but you can kind of see how I go about doing this. I've got their whole gallery uploaded now, so you can see this is what it looks like. Again, I love the way that Pixie Set shows these photos. It works so well for me. Love the aesthetic. It's just simple and clean. And then as clients go into the gallery, they can scroll through and see the images here. For family portrait sessions, I don't have any categories. There's just one collection of all the images. For weddings, I do have separate little categories to make it easier for people to find the photos because that helps me to sell prints. And... Um, there's just so many photos to go through with the wedding that it's nice for people to know where to find them. So you can see if people want to order prints, you can buy photos from here. Here's all their different options. Yep, and now the gallery is totally done. I'm going to deliver these to the clients, and they'll probably buy digital files, which they can download right from the gallery. And I mentioned yesterday that I was trying to come up with a good caption for the social media stuff, so I wrote this down. And then I ended up getting over 30 people liking it, which is a lot just for a blog post, especially it doesn't even have a preview or anything like that. So that did work well too. So, so yeah, so that's my full workflow on editing a family session and uploading it and delivering it.